I recently came across an article which reported findings from SportView player tracking data, which is this really cool technology that actually tracks players' movements on the basketball court. Um, this article in particular, which I actually wrote a post about, and I'll include the link to my post about this article in the description below, so you can go there if you want to check it out. Um, but I also wanted to make a video about this because I found the stats to be quite interesting because it showed a lot of what you know we all already know that Jeremy Lin is one of the best drivers in the NBA. In other words, he's one of the best at getting to the rim. So I just wanted to go through um, the data in more detail and sort of um, break it down a little bit. Um, the four pieces of data that this article talked about was player points per game on drives. So um, the amount of points a player scores uh, while they're driving to the rim. Field goal percentage on drives. So, you know, that's pretty obvious. Percentage of baskets that you make um, when you are driving to the basket. Team points per game on drives. The way they measure this is they add up the points that the individual player is putting up as well as points that um, the, the rest of the team gets when this player drives the basket. So, uh, so it's kind of a sum total. And then finally, uh, it's points via passes on drives. And this is basically, they just took the team points per game on drives subtracted by the um, player points per game on drives and then they get this points via passes on drives so all of those three data are pretty much related they just kind of take pieces from each of them so anyway um, just wanted to go through kind of one by one um, some of the findings so on player points per game on drives Jeremy Lin averages six points per game on drives and actually James Harden is also on on here and he averages 5.9 so he's below uh, Jeremy Lin um, so if you were to rank this and you can't really rank some of these data because some of them have um, a lot of top you know a lot of players have the same stats so um, it's not quite ranked but if you were to kind of give it a num you know just give an idea um, at least this piece of data you can rank so Lin is ranked seven on this list on field goal percent on drives Lynn is ranked fourth and Harden is on uh, is number 10th on this list so Jeremy Lynn actually leads Harden on uh, both measures and on the other two measures Harden doesn't even show up on this top 10 list so that's just one thing uh, interesting to note um, if you recall in one of my videos that I made I uh, mentioned that Daryl Morey actually um, said that in a, in a radio interview he said that Jeremy Lin is actually better at getting to the rim than James Harden and that kind of surprised me uh, I'm not I'm actually not sure now that I think of it if I mentioned it in a video or in one of my posts uh, so I'll check the video and, and see if I did mention it in that video that I was thinking of and if so I will include um, a link to that video in the description below so you can check it out but anyway so um so that's kind of you know obviously Daryl Morey is pretty big on this sport view data so I'm sure he checks this um frequently so I think that's why he made that comment is because Jeremy Lin actually converts more um you know his field goal percentage is higher a lot higher than James Harden at the rim so he's actually better at at converting his um, attempts at the rim and it's interesting to note um, they didn't have this in the data or this article didn't report this data this bit of data but um, there's also the number of drives per game which is you know the number of uh, attempts that a player makes trying to get to the rim per game so it's interesting to note that there are only three players in the top 10 in the number of drives per game, the number of points per game on those drives, 
and the field goal percentage on those drives. So those three players are Tony Parker, Jeremy Lin, and James Harden. That's an interesting bit of data. And to me, that data really tells you how good of a player is at getting to the rim, um, that combination of data. So it really says that, you know, Jeremy Lin, Tony Parker, and James Harden are really great at getting to the rim because these guys make the most attempts at getting to the rim. And um, at the same time, they convert, you know, a lot of their attempts at getting to the rim because players like, you know, even Manu Ginobili, who's, uh, who's, you know, kind of known as being able to get to the rim and stuff, even he, he wasn't in the top 10 in the number of drives per game. So uh, his 76% field goal percentage, although that's, you know, very, very impressive, he's not making as many drives per game as Jeremy Lin is, um, for example. So that's just really interesting to note. So just going through the rest of the data, so team points per game on drives, Jeremy Lin is 10.6 points per game. Again, so that means that on his drives to the basket, he scores 10.6 points for the entire team. So that, that number also includes his points as well. And so uh, the points via passes on drives, you just subtract the number of team points per game um, by the number of player points per game, and you get the number is 4.6. Again, James Harden doesn't show up on this, so um, that just says that, you know, whenever James Harden drives to the basket, he doesn't really look to pass very much, while Jeremy Lin, you know, actually does look to pass when he drives to the rim. So that's just confirming what we already know. So that's that. The really interesting thing to note, and the thing that says that Jeremy Lin is one of the best drivers in the NBA, is that he is the only one to appear in the top 10 in all four of these lists. And if you include the number of drives per game, um, then it's all five of these lists. So it really does speak to how Lin is really an attacking point guard, which, you know, again, it confirms what a lot of people already know about Jeremy Lin, um, but it's just nice to, you know, have the numbers confirm all of that. I'm not sure if you had a chance to check it out, but I did make a video about this ESPN radio host who did talk at length about um, how Jeremy Lin has an elite first step and has an elite ability to get to the rim. So again, these numbers really confirm that that radio host was correct. I'll include a link to that video in the description below. Doubters, of course, will point to the small sample size. This is something that a lot of doubters love to do to undermine anything that Lin does. They'll say that we're only one month into the season, implying that Lin will quote unquote come down to earth. Again, presuming that Lin doesn't belong anywhere close to the top 10 in anything. And if and when Lin's stats do come down, they'll feel vindicated in their beliefs. My argument to this is that these stats are actually not at all representative of what Lin is actually capable of. They are in fact a gross under-representation of what Lin is capable of, even if these stats remain the same, or even if they tick up a little bit, they're still a gross under-representation of Lin's ability to get to the rim. The reason why they're a gross under-representation is that under Mikhail's coaching, Lin is actually not played at all the way Lin is supposed to be played. He's actually less aggressive because, you know, of all the things that I've dis discussed in the past um, about uh, Mikhail not really playing Jeremy Lin uh, the way Jeremy Lin is supposed to be played, uh, about the fact that Mikhail really doesn't like attacking point guards. You know, I talked about all these in the video, um, 
Kevin McHale is just a Jeremy Lin doubter, which I'll include in the link below. But here's just some brief examples of how Lin is not being played the way he's supposed to be played, just to give you an idea. For example, he is not the floor general, which is what Lin is supposed to be. Um, that's what Lin's role should be. And he is not um, allowed to play with Dwight Howard at practice. He doesn't get to practice with Dwight Howard. And for some inexplicable reason, they don't hardly run any pick and rolls for Jeremy Lin, not nearly as much as they should, being that Jeremy Lin is one of the best pick and roll point guards and Dwight Howard is the best pick and roll big. Um, so it just doesn't make any sense why they don't run too many pick and rolls for Jeremy Lin. In fact, um, it's not an exaggeration to say that during that short stretch of Lin's sanity, they ran probably 10 times more pick and rolls during that stretch for Jeremy Lin than they have the entire time Jeremy Lin has been with the Houston Rockets. It's amazing that he's able to make the top 10 and the only one to make the top 10 in all four or five of this list while still being um, not able to play his game. This actually says a lot about Lin's elite ability to get to the rim, that even when he's not allowed to play his game, his stats still show how good he is at getting to the rim. This should also be an indication of just how much Rockets fans are missing out on what Jeremy Lin is really capable of because of the way Mikhail is misusing Jeremy Lin. Rockets fans really aren't able to see just how good Jeremy Lin is because he hasn't been allowed to play his game the entire time he's been with the Rockets. Yet he's still somehow able to put up the numbers. If, for example, they did something as simple and obvious as running more pick and rolls for Jeremy Lin, his stats on drives would be off the charts. I think the all of the points stats would be he, he would be either number one or two. The field goal percentage might come down, but all the other stats would be, you know, straight up. So this is why I think these stats are actually a gross underrepresentation of what Lin is capable of. If Lin is actually played the right way, then these stats would actually show that Lin is probably the best driver in the NBA. And, you know, more reasons why uh, the way Kevin McHale is treating Lin is actually hurting the Houston Rockets because they could be scoring even more points if Lin is allowed to be the floor general and orchestrate the offense. But this brings up a whole host of other issues because, of course, a lot of people will bring up the fact that the Houston Rockets are already number one in terms of points scored as a team, so they don't see anything wrong, you know, with their offense. But again, this is how distorted the picture has become um, because of the way Mikel is misusing Jeremy Lin and as well as other players. This team has potential to be even better than they already are, um, much better if, you know, Jeremy Lin is played the right way. And people just don't have that in their reality because Jeremy Lin is being so misused in the Houston Rockets that um, it's just outside of a lot of fans' reality that that there is anything wrong because everything seems to be sort of okay you know they have a good number one offense and things like that but to me it's not about comparing the Houston Rockets with the rest of the league it's about understanding this team's unique potential and whether or not they're fulfilling their unique potential the same thing can be pointed out with pick and rolls a lot of people will probably mention the fact that you know Jeremy Lin is the number two on the team in terms of uh, doing pick and rolls. But to me, again, this is a um, misunderstanding of the capabilities. 
you know, this is going to be a little hard to explain, but of course Jeremy Lin should be number two at least. That's just a given. So the fact that he's number two doesn't say anything. Even if he's number one, it doesn't say anything. He is just simply not being given en enough pick and roll opportunities for the type of player he is. He's not given the proper amount of pick and roll plays by Kevin McHale. That's just a simple fact. So whether or not he's number one on the team, whether or not he's number two on the team, it doesn't say shit to me because to me, um, what matters is are you properly using that player? It's not a matter of comparing him to the other players because of course Jeremy Lin should be the number one on this team in terms of pick and rolls run for him. So I hope that you know makes a little bit of sense. I don't know. It's kind of going into my head a little bit, uh, and and um, these are kind of the things that I think about. So I'm not sure if I'm able to sort of communicate it to other people. Um, anyway, I just want to share uh, those stats with you. As usual, give me the comments below. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Share the videos and please subscribe.